Hello my fellow paint monsters, how are you today? This is Aga and you're watching Hungry for Paint, a channel about handmade watercolor paints. Today I want to show you some paints by Jasper Stardust. Now there has been some controversy around this maker, but what I want to focus on is the paints alone and their quality. I think this is not the right place to discuss anything else. If you're interested in stuff like marketing strategies, business decisions, work ethics, etc, etc, I think you'd do best to run a Jasper Stardust search on Instagram. Now, to the paints. I've got a set of 12 colors called Steampunk and also some single pans I bought separately. The packaging is fairly simple. There's not much adorning, no personal messages. The tin has Jasper Stardust's logo stamped onto it. And that's pretty much all as far as decoration goes, which is fine by me. When you look at these paints being swatched, you get the impression that they're going to be fairly transparent, which is false, because when the paints dry, you're going to see that most of them turn very opaque. Most of the paints are very pigmented, but to get an intense color on the page, you need some patience. First of all, you'd do well to re-wet these paints before you start painting. Some of them activate easily, some of them don't. Especially the ones that are more gritty and have larger grains, like red opal, the paints made out of rock, like slate, narrow, or melts. This is Swiss dark. Mouth just tells you which part of Swiss mountains this pigment comes from. Now these paints behave in different ways. Some of them are fine grained, they're easy to activate and easy to work with on the paper. And some of them have very big particles in them. They have these heavy grains that are not only noticeable when you look at it, but also they make the paints pretty difficult to work with. And as you're going to see later, this could make layering very difficult. Some of this you're going to see in the layering and glazing part of the video at the bottom of the swatch sheet. Um, but I want to show this aspect of these paints. So we're going to be able to see that in the demonstration video that I'm going to post next week. There's going to be not only color mixing, but also I'm going to paint a little demonstration piece for you and show you exactly how these work with glazing and with inking. And I think this is important because some people use watercolors together with ink and these paints don't behave like most other paints. So some of these paints are really difficult to work with because the particles in them are so big and so heavy. First of all, you need quite a lot of water to pick them up at all, to pick up the paint from the pan. And to transfer it to the paper because if you use a brush that's too dry even if you can see that you've got a lot of paint on your brush you just can't transfer it to the paper because you touch the brush to the paper and the paint stays on the brush so if you want to get an intense color either you're going to have to use more water than what you're probably used to normally or you're going to have to try layering and now this is where it gets difficult because you see these paints the ones that are more gritty they don't layer all that well because when you put one layer of them on the paper when you try to put another layer you reactivate the paint and you move the particles that were already on the paper with your brush so you move everything around again and with these paints it's not like the paint moves on its own in the water like you're probably used to like it happens with ordinary watercolors but you have to move and push the paint around with your paintbrush, sort of, with the colors that are heavier. And while this might create an interesting texture, it also means that the paints are harder to work with. And another downside of this is that these paints, still I'm talking about the ones that have bigger particles, like the rock-based ones, like red opal, like chrysocolor, they rub off the paper quite terribly. I'm going to show this to you towards the end of this video, but if you brush your finger against a finished dried painting, the paint is going to come off. It's going to stain your finger and you're going to see that on the painting. You're going to see where you touch your finger. So this is not good. So while this can be fixed by using a fixative, a spray that will keep the particles of paint in place, this is not ideal, obviously, because you need something else and not just the paint to keep the paint in place and I don't think this is the way it should be 
Mm, I thought about it, I talked to it to my friends and to some paint makers and the consensus is that the particles of paint are probably not ground fine enough and the binder is either not strong enough or there's not enough of it. So if you're willing to use additional mediums in order to make these paints work, then great. If not, then probably you should look somewhere else. Now, this is not a problem that pertains to all of Jasper Stardust's paints. For example, Cotillion uh, Turquoise Green, I think, but I'm going to check this in a moment and show you. These paints stay on the paper quite well and there's, there isn't so much problem with them. Now, on a brighter note, what I really love and appreciate about these paints is the colours themselves. I think the shades are really unique and some of the colours you won't get anywhere else. I mean, the big, heavy, noticeable particles in the paint uh, can also add visually to your painting. So, this is either something you might like or you might not like about them. That depends on you and your style of painting and the effect that you want to achieve with them but colors like the gold pink lake or the dark matter lake red crystal color they're awesome i love the gray green as well it's so subtle the celtic iron uh, the caput mortum dark it's awesome i think the austrian violet brown it's a very unique color as well i haven't seen anything like it anywhere else it's very difficult to work with. You can forget about a smooth layer of it. You can forget about washes with it. Um, but the kind of color and texture it offers, it's something you won't find anywhere else. So it's up to you if you're okay with how these paints work or not. Overall, these paints are very opaque. This is another difficulty if you like working in layers. For single washes, that's probably alright. But if you're used to adding a layer upon a layer upon a layer, then these paints are not going to make your life easy. Now, pricing. While these paints are not the most expensive on the market, they're quite pricey. For me, I think they're a bit overpriced taking into consideration the rubbing off issues, the binder issues. But it's up to you to judge if they're worth it or not for you. Now another thing I noticed about some of these paints, for example Carnation Dark. In this paint the problem is probably the most visible. If you put a thick layer of this paint on the paper, when it gets dry, it's going to have this chalky whitish finish on top. It also happens with other colors, if you're not careful, but Carnation Dark is definitely the worst. So you need to be very careful, and it's better to use thinner layers and a light brush. But again, with these paints it's difficult to work in layers because they reactivate very easily and you end up moving the paint around with your brush, even if you don't use a lot of water. So this is problematic. And if you don't use a lot of water, you won't be able to get the paint off your brush easily because, as I said before, the paint particles are big, they stick to the paintbrush and if you don't have enough water on the paintbrush, they're not going to get off. So there you have it. As you've probably realized, I've got very mixed feelings about these paints. I'd say if what I talked about earlier doesn't scare you off, by all means, give them a try, give them a go. But if you like your watercolors smooth and easy to work with, then probably you should check out other makers. The owner of Jasper Stardust Paints, Rick, is pretty active on Instagram. He keeps developing new products all the time. He has sales going on pretty often, so especially around the time of holidays, I think you'd do best to wait for a sale to grab some of his paints. They're pretty often discounted up to 15 or even 20%, so it's pretty easy to catch a bargain. And especially if you're after one of his sets, these can get pretty expensive, so it's best to wait for a sale. And when you place your order, Rick is probably going to reach out and contact you, perhaps show you some of the paints he has that he's not listed on his Etsy, so he might try and sell you some more of his stuff. So be prepared if you've got a budget within which you need to stick. So here are the finished and dried swatches. The paints granulate like crazy. 
they're very opaque you can hardly see the stamps from underneath most of them but look at the textures I'm not sure if you can see it well but carnation dark is a bit whitish on top And here the layering. With these you can forget about sharp edges and crisp lines. Even if the layer underneath is completely dried and you're using a relatively dry brush, the moment you touch it to paper the edge starts moving, feathering and getting blurry. This is definitely the worst with the colors that granulate the most. With some of these I was simply unable to achieve a border between layers It's pretty difficult to get a really smooth, even layer of these. But the textures, these are crazy. And here, if you look at Austrian Violet Brown, you're going to see exactly what I meant about the white sediment. So that's not very nice. I don't know if it's fillers or brighteners or what, but I don't like this at all. Avoid thick layers of this one. And now I'm going to show you what I meant when I said that the binder wasn't strong enough or there wasn't enough of it. First let's have a look at Morpho and I wasn't rubbing hard. And if you're working in a sketchbook this might be a problem. I'm gonna blow now. <laughs> See? Gone. And same here. Cotillion stains fingers terribly. It's going to stain neighboring pages in your sketchbook just the same way. Okay folks, that's all I've got for you this week. Next week there's going to be a demonstration and color mixing video featuring paints by Jasper Stardust. If you haven't quite made up your mind yet about these paints, make sure to come back next Friday. You're going to be able to see uh, the issues that I have with these paints up close. And also you're going to be able to see how wonderful mixes they can create together. Make sure to visit Hungry Foot Paint on Instagram for a sneak peek on Wednesday. And after next Friday, when I publish the mixing and demonstration video, you'll be able to read an in-depth review of these paints on Hungry Foot Paint blog. If you find my videos useful, consider supporting Hungry Foot Paint on Coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next week. Bye! <coughs>